With the ever-changing world of women's health and surgery, it's always great to hear from the real experts to provide the latest on what matters most. With us today is board-certified OBGYN, Dr. Greg Marchand. Great to hear from you, or great to see you. I'm familiar with the MD behind a name, but you have a lot of acronyms behind your name. What, what, is, what do they mean? What do those titles mean? Well, the, the FACOG is fellow of the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology. That's my board certification in obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, the FACS uh, is because I'm also certified by the American College of Surgeons, a uh, fellow of the American College of Surgeons. And SOMIS is my new designation. I'm very pleased with uh, Surgeon of Excellence in Minimally Invasive Surgery. Okay, so let's talk about minimally invasive surgery uh, for just a minute. What types do you specialize in? Well, I specialize in all kinds of gynecologic minimally invasive surgery. Some women are going to need a hysterectomy, either for bad periods, uh, heavy bleeding, or a lot of pelvic pain. Other women are going to get the unfortunate diagnosis that they've got a pelvic cyst or, or pelvic mass that needs to be removed. Mm -hmm. Minimally invasive surgery is the best means to get this done. So we're going to show two images. The first image is a scar, and this is a typical scar, right, for a woman who has a, a, a surgery of that sort, a, a female surgery, correct? Yes, this is from a, a standard open procedure. That's a fan and steel scar. As you see, it's it's quite large, has quite a bit of scarring, and there would have been a, quite a bit of pain to recover from that surgery. Okay, so let's go to the next image, and what are, what are we seeing in the second image? So these results are typical of minimally invasive surgery. Uh, this woman's undergone a laparoscopic procedure, has essentially an invisible scar in the umbilicus or in the belly button. And then the other tiny scar is, is kind of too low to even be seen uh, on the screen. So this is, this, is a, this is the type of surgery that you would do, minimally invasive, because the first one is what a lot of women deal with, and they've got to live with those scars for the rest of their lives. So this is the option that we have when it comes to minimally invasive. How likely is the average woman to need surgery at some point in her life? Well, unfortunately, it's very likely. About a third of women in the U.S. are, are going to need a hysterectomy at some point for one reason or another, uh, and over half of women in the U.S. will have some kind of gynecologic surgery in their lifetime. So, so this is a topic that, that really is going to hit a lot of women close to home. Absolutely, and it's a topic that you know a lot of women don't always have you know, with their doctor until it's too late. So what are, do you think are some of the biggest misconceptions uh, when it comes to women in, in, in need of surgery like a surgery like this? I think the biggest misconception is going to be that the woman doesn't have choices or that, that there aren't any other options. Lots of times the woman is being told about the surgery by their primary care OBGYN, maybe somebody they've trusted for a long time, and that, that physician may not necessarily be skilled in minimally invasive surgery and may not offer minimally invasive options. So what questions should we ask? Because you understand mm -hmm. why a woman would feel comfortable with a doctor who she's had for years and years. So what questions should we ask? I would simply pose the question, is there a minimally invasive alternative or is there a doctor that could do this, a surgeon that could do this through minimally invasive means? Now, do we have to be referred to you or can we just come to see you if we have another, another doctor? Because you say you strongly encourage people to look for other options. Yep, you can uh, contact me through my website. Um, and generally there are minimally invasive options uh, for almost all gynecologic surgeries. Okay, well I, I appreciate that because I think that having a second opinion is always guaranteed uh, to me the right choice when it comes to women and women's health. Well Dr. Marchand uh, is going to be joining us a little bit later uh, in the next half hour and he's going to be sharing more with us about his latest advances in uh, the very common women's uh, medical procedure. You're going to hear more about that coming up and to learn more about Dr. Marchand's minimally invasive surgeries or if you'd like to have him out for a speaking engagement, you can visit his website, gregmarchandmd.com.